I call. What you got? Only these. Three kings and two aces. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. Yeah, what's the big idea? First time I ever see six aces in a pack. Seven, old son, including the Joker. Now, where do you get them? Same place as you. What are you driving at? Drop that money. Like hell, I will. Keep your dirty hands off me. I won't. Drop that money. Don't try any of your dirty or European tricks on me. Yeah, just what I might have thought from a lousy Atlantic. Say, are you trying to start another war? Where the hell is it? Uh, yeah. Where do you think you're going? Is this place yours? Sure. You yeah, leave that man alone. Close your trap, dumbbell. This is my business. You got any liquor on here? No liquor here. What do you got in here? Well, nothing. Outrage on the frontier early this morning creates a critical intercontinental situation. This is the latest of a series of deplorable incidents causing friction between the Federation of Europe and the Atlantic State. Despite all the attempts of the World League of Peace, despite the annihilation of the old provocative national boundaries and the substitution of continental federations. The year 1940 finds us faced with as dangerous a situation as the year 1914. We look to London, the headquarters of the great World League of Peace and of the government of the Federation of Europe to assist us in destroying the mysterious and unscrupulous forces which we have reason to believe are seeking to precipitate another world war. These fools of politicians, money talk. Ah, just for that. Если бы они знали, что мы их видим, я вас уверяю, они развезли бы нас. Пух и прах. Пух и прах. Ah, lost my friends. We are about to be rewarded. Ha-ha! <laughs> Monsieur a parfaitement raison. Je vous assure qu'avant peu de temps, 
with the own of her revanche. <laughs> In 48 hours, we should have brought about the war, which we have waited. Yes, yes, but then that's where we get our profit. <laughs> 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 What a relief if we get war talk and see a nice bit of horse flesh again, eh? Oh, I wish I could get away like those fellows. Uh, look, uh, why, there's old Colonel Jenkins. Wise man. Retired from government house before they mix up with these Atlantic people. I right, Joe, there they are. Very nice. Oh, that's out there, coming down. This is New York calling the world. We shall now broadcast pictures of the location on the frontier where this morning's outrage was perpetrated. Though we regret the accidental death of the two European rum runners, there can be no excuse for the deliberate and unprovoked attack by the European troops on the peaceable guardians of our boundaries. Yes, indeed. Did you hear what that Atlantic announcer said? Well, what about the murder of our guards, let alone the rum runners? Is the European government going to stand for this? <laughs> we ought to declare war on them. Federated War Council are in there now, debating. Debating about arbitration, I suppose. Debating? Why don't we do something? I tell these I say, this, this is a nice little piece. <laughs> oh, peace. I thought you were talking about war, not peace. <laughs> so I was, sir. By Joe, I saw them. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Wait I'm a sorry, moment, sir. So. Wait a moment. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's accidental. I'm sorry. You, you can't blot out the, the entire no. peace league with... Too strong. Rah, rock, sir. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello, Hello, darling. Hello. I say, isn't it dreadful? You know, I think it's delightful. What? Me looking at you again. Oh, don't be so ridiculous. <laughs> I mean all this talk about war. Isn't it awful? I think it's marvellous. If they'd only invent something which would enable me to touch you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, what is the latest news? The latest news is... Yes? That you're dining with me tonight. Tonight? Yes. Oh, you're mad. Only about you, darling. I'll call for you in the car, as usual. But you can't. It's impossible. Don't you realize that we may be on the verge of declaring war? And I'm on the verge of declaring something much more important than war, if you'll only dine with me tonight. Well, my Hello. 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 Oh, Hello. damn. Hello. 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 Isn't your wavelength working all right? Of course it is. Fade away, miss. There's a war on. I'm not talking to you. Sorry, you've been trouble. Oh, dear. Hello. 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 
Hello. Oh. oh, there you are, darling. I say, I'm awfully sorry. The Duchess cut in. Now, where were we? I was just telling you, I can't possibly come out tonight. We've got to stop this war. You know, I think you're perfectly adorable when you're official. <laughs> but, Michael, it's war. Then your league must postpone it until after dinner. We must eat while we can. I'll call for you as usual. Goodbye. No good, Michael. I can't goodbye. Stop. Don't turn it up, Michael. <laughs> goodbye. <I can't>. Goodbye. <laughs> My considered opinion, and I must speak frankly now, that the European government be held responsible for this final outrage. Yeah, I find that it is a dreadful sacha. No, senor. It's the most Mr. President, I protest. Say, sit down. Our secret police have evidence that the man who fired the shots was a European agent. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Moreover, we know that there is a European plot to blow up our building. But our patience is exhausted. And with God by our side, my countrymen, we are convinced that only direct action will avail. There is no As representing the world's League of Peace, I deprecate the President's warlike sentiments. I have here a message from Dr. Seymour, the League's Vicar General. It states that over 20 million members of the League of Peace, not only on both sides of the Atlantic, but throughout the world, demand a peaceful settlement. To the death they are pledged to resist war and all warlike preparations. Uh, Miss, uh, Miss Seymour? Straight ahead, Major. Well, thank you. Uh, I suppose it's no good uh, giving you the bird, sir? I'm afraid not. Pretty good, if I may say so, sir. Not bad. What about your own? Well, I'm afraid my uh, fighting days are over, sir. Thank you, Carly, Colonel. Major Dean here. Michael, come in, my dear. Hello, darling. My dear. Good evening, sir. Brad? Good evening, Major Dean. What's the latest news from New York? Do you think there's going to be a war? War? <laughs> of course. 
course there won't be a war. The people of today are much too intelligent. That's what they said in 1914. It isn't what the country are thinking. It is what the government intends to do. They go to the country if they want to put a penny tax on tea or beer. But they never dream of taking a referendum of peace or war. No, I have great faith in our league and we shall go on fighting for peace. For I am deeply concerned. Yes, you know, my chief concern at the moment is that your daughter might be late for the dinner that I've ordered. And you know, cold soup is worse than any war. Daddy. Daddy. Do you think you can manage without me? Well, I... I suppose I shall uh, have to... someday. Oh, I'm just going to change. I shall be a minute. Understand me, sir. I'm as much for peace as you are. I believe in deeds, not words. If you want peace, you must enforce it. And there is only one way to do that by a mercenary army. I join issue with you, Dr. Seymour. War is bad enough, but at least armies are held together by ideals of loyalty and patriotism. Patriotism? Tcha! It's usually a spirit of ignorance and arrogance which my league is trying to destroy. Are you prepared to make every man and woman in this country a traitor? In your sense of the word, I am. I believe that the people themselves should decide between peace and war. Don't you worry, sir. reaches 25 millions, then we'll show you something effective. You can show me nothing more effective, sir, than this. Oh, 
Yeah, it's very pretty. Very nice little job indeed. You just set that clock so that you time it ready for the next train which passes through this tunnel. The London Paris Dining Car Express. Carol, Carol, sit there. Oh, sweet 
little angel face you was me. <laughs> going to have him say you were. Uh, oh, he shall bear sweet you are. Yes. He's got some plastic bags. What a wonderful thing life is. After 40 years, here we are, able to travel about and enjoy ourselves. Oh, yes, very wonderful, I'm sure. Yes, the angel face is born. this war may drive us further apart than ever. Then let's get closer while we can. Uh, why are you always so stupid? But I'm not. I'm serious. Can't you see I am? I hate war too. Hate it. What can I do to stop it? You could refuse to fight. Ah! I see, and then I suppose they'd say, let's call it all off. Dean won't fight. What a child you are. Well, there are 25 millions who won't, and they are right. Who knows? If one's country is in trouble, one must fight for it. Oh. <laughs> I understand. My country, right or wrong. No man who gives his life for his country 
dies in vain. In the last war, nearly a million men died for our country. In the last war, nearly eight million men died all over the world, fighting in a war to end war. And if we have this one, they'll have died in vain. What about the end wars now? Once and for all. Why not? That's what I'm hoping. That's what I believe is happening. Then I am converting you. More and more. To you. Now let's talk about us again. You don't think I want to fight now, do you? Uh, the Federated States of Europe are in immediate danger. I demand, therefore, that we disregard the ultimatum of the Atlantic States. Then I shall. I call for a vote to mobilize at once every man and woman subject to the Conscription Act of 1938. First, those for war. There are ten for war. Next, those for peace. There are ten for peace. A deadlock. Then I have no alternative but to cast my deciding vote for war. What's oh. Stand by for the European government official announcement. The government have decided upon immediate mobilization throughout Europe and all men and women subject to the conscription act of 1938 will report to their area commandants forthwith. moment, 
Hundreds of European aeroplanes are waiting to cross the Atlantic to destroy our beautiful country. And without warning, they will attack our beloved land. They will select our most important locations. Our cherished countryside, our farms, our forests, our villages, our bridges, our cities. They will launch their deadly bombs of reeking gas over our faces. They will drop their canisters of high explosives, of destructive liquid on whose buildings melt like toy castles Can't you imagine what invasion would mean? Can you imagine some war maddened brute seizing you in his arms and... Oh. Then would you have me fight when our country has been bled white of its manhood, when even the children are marching, marching, marching? Then would you have me a coward? Yes, because then rather than be honored for killing your fellow men, you would be scorned for loving them. And that is true courage. How many of you? How can you tell
Name, please. Name, please. Please don't take me. I don't want to go. Name, please. Please don't take me. Married? Have you got a baby to look after? Society has already tried to stop recruiting. Right. Oh, no. Because no. now that can be. No. 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 I mean, if a thing like that was allowed, well, uh, <laughs> there'd be no war. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. no war at all, eh? <laughs> Don't you worry about that. That peace society, as you call it, is going to get the surprise of its life. We've arranged to deal with them. You leave it to us. the central aerodrome. It's a matter of life and death to prevent any airplanes leaving when war is declared. War? Yes. But what about you? 
I intend to stop this war. Yes, but, but how? I shall go to the president and make my last appeal. You'll be in the hands of the war party. Will you be safe? Yes, I'm a man of peace, but I shall go prepared. I intend to stop this war at any cost. Now, dear, along to the central aerodrome, quickly. Yes, Stand by, please. European government calling the world. At midnight, the president will make an announcement of worldwide importance. Stand by. <laughs> Vital hour is here. 
with full realization of the consequences and with trust in God and the righteousness of our cause, I go now to broadcast the declaration of war. No, 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 no. So one minute after, you are proclaimed a hero. Ah, that's right, Governor. Dr. Seymour. Dr. Seymour, may I express my sympathy over the peaceful disaster? Thank you, Mr. President. this, sir. What is it? It is from our Atlantic Vice President. Hypocrisy. We have proof, not only of the complicity of the Atlantic states in the Channel Tunnel disaster, but, my dear Dr. Seymour, in the destruction of your own headquarters. There, you see. Time draws near. At twelve, I declare war. But we have need of all possible unity. Will you not first broadcast a message of encouragement to our people? Just one moment. Will the government and the people of Europe follow you to war? Yes. Though I have been most anxious, because I realized that your influence was the greater. And can you also lead them to peace? If you so desire. Answer me! Yes? Then... I will broadcast a message to the world. The President of the Federated States of Europe speaking to the world. I have here Dr. Seymour, the President of the World's Peace League. He has something vital, no doubt surprising, to say to you regarding the crisis. Dr. Seymour. The President has asked me to convey to the whole world the European governments will submit all differences to arbitration and is confident that the Atlantic government will agree. There has been an accident to the televisor but I can still address you through the microphone. There shall be peace upon earth 
and goodwill among mankind, there will be no war. the world. The Seymour case. Dr. Seymour, who is charged with the assassination of the President of Europe, has, during his three weeks trial, maintained absolute silence and has declined to make any defense. The trial is now drawing to its close, and tomorrow the judges summing up and the verdict of the jury will be broadcast from the Old Bailey to all stations. Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn. Evelyn. Well, Michael. Evelyn, my dear, about your father. Can't I help you? Help me? You? I don't expect any help from your side. But I want to help you. I'm so unhappy thinking of you fighting all by yourself. I want to be with you. Is it too late? Oh, no, Michael. It's not too late, if you really mean it. But I do mean it. Your father saved the world. I want to help you through the trial. They dare not find him guilty. You believe that, too? I'm sure. When can I come and see you? Now, Michael. Do you mean that? This is London Calling. 
the Seymour case. This is, as you know, the last day of the trial, and the judge is now addressing the jury. It is a judge's duty to use the opportunity during the closing moments of the trial, not only to guide the minds of the jury, but to presume to give them some advice. The fact that the death of a president brought peace to this world has no bearing on the case whatsoever. The fact that had the president lived, thousands of lives might have been needlessly sacrificed, has no bearing upon the case either. A life has been taken, and according to the law, a life is the forfeit. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is now your solemn duty to consider your verdict. The court will now adjourn once the jury considers touching the trial held here this day. The jury will follow me. <laughs> Foreman, the prisoner at the bar is charged with murder. Do you find him guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Prisoner of the bar, you have been found guilty of murder. Is there anything you wish to say as to why the sentence of death should not be passed upon you? <laughs> <laughs> 